do. I thinking I was going to drop this thing. I've never seen it. Ever. So now I am. I never run out of words to say about people or about moments. If anybody's ever read my writings, you know, I can encompass this beautiful tapestry of, of words to make meaning or make sense. Words don't do Joselito justice. There's so much, you could just stare at him and walk into a room and you just felt better. Because knowing that he was there, it just felt better. Whether it was because you had a hurt shoulder or hurt back or hurt heart or hurt mind. We created him as our healer and so he healed. So, I can't find words to do justice, but I would like for you guys to give words to today. Please come up and share your stories of memories of something you did funny. My favorite memory is, I've never seen a Filipino man wear gloves to eat crab. In fact, I think you get kicked out of the club if you're wearing gloves, but then he like explained to me Wearing gloves was important because he had a massage the next day and would you want to smell like crab? <laughs> that made sense, sort of, but I'm Filipino, so I still said, but don't you want to feel it like crack and da 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 da? And he's like, I'd also like to make some money. Okay, yeah, that makes sense too. Totally get that. So I, I let him go with the whole glove thing. I made fun of Rachel and him for the portion of the crab feed. But then he started to make fun of me because I'm a vegetarian and I was having crab. And so he explained to me that I get kicked out of the Filipino club because it leaves almost every dish not available to me, at least not any of the good dishes. So uh, he was right and he got me there. And so he took a good ribbing on me for the rest of the night. And then I had cake and I was all better. But, as we were walking out, we were still making fun of each other and still having a good time. And in fact, I think there's even pictures from our night there as if anyone saw on Facebook with him in the blue surgical gloves. Okay, who else would like to... I have a ton of other stories and like I said, once you get me on a roll, I don't stop talking. As you can tell, as the nervousness is kicking in and the second wave of weeping will come back. I'll talk at the end of this by all means, but I'd like to open the floor to anybody else who'd like to share a story. Small, big, funny, something he said, something he did. Okay. Everybody say hello to Michelle. Hello. Is this better? <laughs> so I met Jolito before I started working at Club Sport. I, he gave me my first handle massage and he connected me to amazing network of other mothers with triplets because I think he has a cousin or an aunt that also had triplets in the group. And then about after my kids were born, I worked with him for about three years every Friday and Sunday. And I remember at first being so excited to get booked with Joselito because he was always booked. So anybody who called for a massage, I got him. So <laughs> my days were always full. Um, and we would talk and share stories, work on each other if we ever had the time. Maybe this work. We worked together for about three to four years. Such a great guy, but I remember always being pissed at him because I always wanted Friday after Thanksgiving off. And for whatever reason, he always got it off. No matter if I asked for it in January, Cozalita always got it off. And I'd always give him a hard time for it. He, he would always turn it around and say, well, at least you're going to get booked because I'm not there. <laughs> And there's no one there. <laughs> so you'll make money. Look at it that way, Michelle. <laughs> but he was just a sweet, sweet man. And I always look forward to seeing him whenever I come to the club after I left. That's my story.
Hi, I'm Hector Dela Cruz. I met Jose Lido about five years ago, Mia? About five years ago. Mia and his youngest daughter, Kayla, are best friends. Uh, and I was blessed to meet him four years ago. And I say blessed because whether you met him four years ago or, <laughs> or if you met him four months ago or if you had a four minute conversation with him, you felt better about it. You smiled when you left that conversation. He was just so giving, so honest. He didn't have a bad feeling in his heart. He always had good things to say about people. And uh, he was great with my kids. He was great with everybody's kids. Um, and I had the, the, the good fortune of seeing him almost every day for, for this last year um, because he lived across the street with Rachel. And um, and he had the good fortune of meeting Rachel a year ago um, because that's the happiest I had seen him uh, since I knew him. And Rachel, thank you for that. And I know he loved Damani and he loved Auburn. And, uh, you know, he had a good little family going on. So it was sad to see him go, but when he did go, he was happy. And he was in a great place and things were coming together for him. And I'm j I just feel blessed to have known him. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Auburn. I've known Josuido for about the past year now, and my fondest memory of him. Um, I was driving to dinner with him in his truck and um, he was watching this YouTube video of, uh, of like a self-confidence speaker and I was listening to music and he's like, hey Auburn, why don't you watch this with me? And I'm like, no, I'm good, I'm listening to music. He's like, no, no, watch this with me. Uh, and I, I watched it and, you know, being a kid, I didn't, I didn't think much of it, but um, when we got to the restaurant, we were eating dinner, and I was talking about it with him, and hearing him say what this man said resonated with me more than just watching the video, because in the short time I knew Josolito, he struck me as a man who made me want to be better, and everybody that he knew and loved want to be better, and I'm sorry. All right, I'll give this a shot. Um, hi, my name is Lagaya, and I'm one of Posolito's many clients that became a lot more than that. We became good friends. Um, I started seeing him about seven years ago when I had a back problem, and so many people have talked about how he didn't just heal your body. He really healed your soul, you know. We used to joke that it was so painful going through deep tissue that, you know, you could probably hear our screams down the hallway, and he'd always tell me, bite down on something because you're scaring everyone else away but he'd say relax just go with it you're gonna be fine and you know and he was right and so during those long sessions in our in some deep therapy he would uh, we would talk about things from our Filipino heritage our crazy families to food we talked a lot about food and our stomachs would both be growling and and we would just laugh and talk and the therapy wasn't just for our bodies a lot of times we talked about things that were going on in our personal lives and you know the last couple of years for him had been really difficult and i have a younger brother who's a lot like Josalito, and his last couple of years have been really difficult and seeing him turn the corner and seeing the joy that rachel brought to him and that his life was finally on track i'm so grateful that he got to that place and i'm happy to see everyone that loved him as much as as i did Thanks for doing this.
Hi, my name's Carrie. I'm a horrible speaker, so um, I didn't I didn't know Joselito Joselito really well, but I knew him, and um, I loved him. And it, it's funny to not know somebody very you know super close, but to feel love for him, and that's what I felt for him. Um, and I think it was because my first interaction was with him was when my son hurt his back. He's now 16, but at the time he was about 11 and a half, and he hurt his back playing baseball. And somebody had told me to get him a massage, and I, I couldn't get him into the person they said it wasn't at Club Sport. And so I, I don't remember who I talked to, but they said, go get a Joselito. And I was like, a what? You gotta get a Joselito. So I said, this is my son. I was thinking he should probably have a woman. And they're like, no, no, no. So I brought Will into him and I talked to him ahead. I just loved him. I mean, he was gorgeous. <laughs> and he had this best smile and he was just warm. And I said to him, I've never, my son's probably gonna be, I don't, he's never had a massage and blah, 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 blah. And he said, I'm good, it's good, you're, you're, he's gonna be fine. And he brought, so Will went in. And then after the massage, he took like an extra 15 or 20 minutes and showed him how to stretch his back so that he wouldn't hurt himself again or what to do when it happened. And I remember thinking, what a special man. He didn't even know my son, but he did that time with him. And then my son had the best, exp I mean, he felt better and he, he, he said it, that was amazing. But then he started saying his back hurt every week, his back hurt. And his friends started telling their parents that their back hurt because he told everybody about this. So um, I just remember for Father's Day this year, I went into the pro shop and because my husband was weirded out about getting a massage from a man too, but after Will's, he got one when he hurt his shoulder. And he said, you're going to hate me for the next two days, but in two days, you're going to love me. And sure enough, that's what he did for my husband, too. And I walked in, and he was there, and I said, you're my husband's father. You're Shane, because he knew Shane. He said, you're Shane's Father's Day present. And I got him a massage. And so both Will and Shane said, it just we're just going to miss that, because he is he took care of us. So, um, And I just wanted to say, when I would see him, when I would walk into the club, he was like a ray of sunshine, I think, because he was with always standing near Rachel, and it was beautiful to see how they were together. And they just, he just, his whole face lit up just being near her. And um, it was kind of a joy to come in because I hate working out, but I would come in and see them, and I'd, I'd feel happy for a little bit, and then I'd be on my way to do the horrible torture. But he, it just was really nice to see how happy you made him because it was genuine. Thanks. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kristen, and um, I don't speak very well in front of groups unless I'm talking about softball. <laughs> I can talk about softball all day long, but um, um, I didn't know Joselito really well. I've seen him at the softball field, but I felt like I knew him really well because I would talk to Rachel every week. We'd work out every Monday morning, and she'd tell me how her life was going, and, and I'd say, yeah, you know, I saw him at the softball fields, and he'd always give me the big hug when I saw him. And um, I just felt super close to him, even though I never was really physically around him that much. Um, but Rachel just, um, you know, thought the world of him. And I knew the few times I did talk to him in big conversations, it was about Rachel and how happy he was. And, um, you know, these last couple of weeks have been hard for all of us. And we just are gonna miss Joselito so much. But I know Rachel, you know that we'll all be there for you, every one of us. And and we're never gonna stop caring and loving you and loving him. And we will be with him again someday. So we just have to know that that we'll see him again. So thank you.